Hey guys, this is gonna be strange because I am recording on a Saturday afternoon, which I never do. And we're gonna start out, even though it's past brunch time, we're having a mimosa, a mimosa Saturday. I'm going to be drinking it in my sheepy mug. I got this at Yellow Springs a very long time ago. And you always start out with your orange juice ice cubes. I brought this in here just to show you guys. This is a silicone ice cube tray and it is only for my mimosa cubes. So if you like mimosas, get yourself one. Ice cubes are back in the freezer. Like I said, it is like two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm just starting on mimosas. This is probably really stupid because the only other thing I've consumed today is coffee. Don't use me as your example, folks. It is one of the joys of being an adult, right? I do what I want. Oh, the bubbly. I love the bubbly. I don't have one of those bougie ice buckets to put it in. Grab your drink, let's get started. Quick side note, I wanna make these into like little people. I'm sure somebody else has done it, but I think it would be fun. Lord knows, I have plenty. <laughs> hey guys, Chevy Rel here. You are in the stuff room. My name is Chevis, also known as Chevy Rel. If you're new here, welcome to the shit show. If you're an OG, thanks for hanging out as always. Like I said, who knows where this episode is going to take us, miss. I've had nothing to eat and I'm starting on mimosas. Orange juice is good for you, right? Also, the other thing that's going to be a shit show is I forgot to print out my notes. So I have to go off of my phone. So bear with me. Okay, starting with a couple admin things. Giveaways. We are doing the Deep Stash Cal, which is really a male crochet works as well or anything. Deep stash, something that you have had in your stash forever and ever and you're finally like, I'm gonna make this thing that I said I was gonna make 10 years ago and I've just never made it. So that's an Instagram giveaway. You can do hashtag DSCal23. It is a very like chill cal hashtag what you're doing. And then I have been randomly picking winners and shooting you guys Instagram messages. So if you have gotten an Instagram message, <laughs> if you have gotten an Instagram message from me that you are a winner and you haven't given me your name and address yet, please do so. I am not going to show you my shawl today that I'm knitting for that because I haven't done anything to it. I've cast on a bunch of things, or at least I feel like a bunch of things since I last saw you. And I just, it's just there and it'll get done when it gets done. You know what I'm saying? The other thing that we have to draw for, and I'm going to do it right now, is on the last episode, Dawn from Yarn is a Sport donated this cool backpack and one of you get to win it. Hold on, good grief, I suck at this game. There. And I am going to, I put it in a random, a, you know, the random generator thing. And you had to use the word sport in your comment. Who is the winner? Oh, they didn't use the word sport. Ah, it is Dale Menges. I'm probably so butchering that. She said, yarn is totally a sport. Look how much you have to do. Wind it all up, arms and hand muscles work, as well as leg muscles if you stand. And it goes on, but I can't read it. So Dale, that's D-A-Y-L-E, Menges. Oh, you guys, get a hold of me. You can shoot me a message on Instagram or Ravelry or my email address. I never say this, all of my contact information is listed below in the notes. And I haven't said it in a long time. I try to always, always, always link 
all of the things that I talk about in the notes below. If there's ever anything that is not in the notes below, which there have been, and thank you to those of you who have pointed it out, I always go in and update them. So if there's something that I talk about that I forgot to link, let me know, I'll get you the link. Dale, get a hold of me, we'll get this bag from Dawn out to you. Also, you can follow Dawn's YouTube, uh, Yarn is a Sport. Obviously, she'll be linked. Let me open my notes back up. The only thing I don't like about this cup is I'm a lefty. I'm a lefty, but in our world, I'm ambidextrous. So I have, like anytime I learn something new, I have to figure out what I am. Like I knit right-handed, unlike Aquila, who is a lefty knitter and she knits left-handed. But I do lots of things with my left hand. Drinking being one of, actually I do both but I hate that there isn't one on this side. I feel like I have to use my right so you can see my sheepy. In case you can't tell, I'm pretty zippy today. So enjoy the ride. <laughs> I got ready, look, I got ready for nobody but you guys. I'm gonna have to put timestamps in because people are gonna be like, is, is this bitch gonna talk about knitting? <laughs> The whole thing that started this is I got this new outfit I have to show you guys. Isn't it cute? Oh, I love it so much. I got it from Earthbound Trading. Is it Earthbound Trading Company? Earthbound. I was impaired. Who knows what that might have been? Sleep deprivation, drinks, pick your poison. But I ordered this. It was on sale and I'd forgotten I did it <laughs> until I got an email and then I got the box and I was so excited. So it was, it was, I love it. Anyway, I tried it on and then I was like, I'm just going to leave it on to record. So this is like right out of the bag. It's all wrinkled. I don't give a shit. And then I was like, oh, let's actually put some makeup on. So that's why I look a little different. I actually did my makeup, which I do maybe twice a year. And whenever I do it, I feel like I look like a little girl who has played in her mom's makeup bag <laughs> because I never do it. And I feel like a clown, but I was just feeling the vibe, man. I was rocking out to Hip Hop Barbecue. It's my one of my favorite stations on Pandora. And I was having a little dance party in the bathroom. It's been a good day. And now we're going to talk about yarn, I promise. In other news, since I've last talked to you, I had the pleasure of being interviewed by Tammy. Tammy is a columnist at KnitLeaks. KnitLeaks is a website that is fairly new to me. I've signed up for their newsletter. It's great. Tammy is actually based in Brazil. She does watch the podcast. And shout out to the M Crazy Girls. That's her knit group. I've been told they watch too. Girls, you got you have your drink? Go get your drink. Cause that's how we do it here. Anyway, if you haven't checked out knit link knit leaks yet, they'll be linked below. I copied their about section because I didn't want to mess it up. It says knit leaks helps promote brands through authentic and original stories to reach new audiences and increase sales. Our original content presented in a conversational tone, provides audiences with enjoyable reading and shopping experiences. And it is fiber. It is knitty things. I think crochet things. It's yarny things. Tammy is also a knitwear designer. She has some designs on Ravelry. I'll link that below. And even though it is past Halloween, because, you know, shit show, Tammy has offered to give you guys a free download of her sock weenie pattern. Look how cute it is. It's a $4.63 pattern and the coupon code is Spooky Chevy's. So if you would like to snag this free pattern, thank you, Tammy. Spread the love. So start planning your Halloween socks for next year. Last thing of admin before I start talking about nitty stuff. I know that some of you don't stick around to the end and that's fine. But 
If you wanna fast forward to the end, that's cool too. I just wanna tell you, you have to stick around at like, or at least watch Happy Mail. It's not Happy Mail because I did not get it in the mail, but Mama Jean got me something, made me something, and it is epic, and you have to see it. So if I've already lost you, you guys miss out. But for those of you, even if you don't watch the whole thing, Fast forward to the happy mail section and you have to, or whatever, like I do the chapter things. You guys get it, right? So I'm, I'm just telling you, you have to stick around. You don't have to stick around. You just have to at least go watch my happy mail. Oh my God, you guys, I'm Twitter pated. My first thing is a fail, kind of. I don't really know if it's a fail. I, I, I haven't like, look. You guys saw this the last time. I don't even have a printout. This is the Gudrun. And I am using this, I've shown you before, Fibra Natura. It's like a cotton linen, 53% cotton, 47% linen. It looks like that. I'm just not loving it. And I haven't touched it since the last time you guys saw it. And I don't think that I'm going to touch it maybe ever again, but I do really like the the finished product. I, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. There's so many other things on my radar that are awesome that I've just like given myself permission to be like to that. <laughs> I'm keeping it real, you know. My first finished object, let me get my sock blockers. I think I would have had this done ahead of time. So before I show you, I have to tell you my standard uh, sock pattern, right? For me that I do, not pattern, but formula. Before it was always 64 stitches on size two needles. And I love them, they're super comfy, but as I wear them a little bit, I, I feel like they are too loose of a gauge. I've never blown out a heel or anything, but I do feel like they, I wanted to try my socks at a tighter knit. So I kept the 64 stitches and went down a needle size. I absolutely love the fabric that it's producing, even though I hate knitting on size ones. Like hate, like it cramps my hands up anyway. With these socks, these are shorty socks, and I knit them on size ones, and I kept the 64 stitches. This is Pretty Twisted Yarns. I have no idea what this is. I did a tab heel, which I'll tell you about in a minute. They're too tight. They're too tight for my feet. So my next pair, I am going to stick with the ones, which I hate. <laughs> It's, it just makes sock knitting not enjoyable. But I like the fabric that it produces better. It's, I just like that tighter knit. I don't know how many stitches I'm getting per inch now. So let me look. Okay, so this is a 10 stitch per inch. Is that what you guys normally get? And I think I was getting eight on the twos. This is what I had left over from my Ripple Bralette. And then I just had this in the stash, right? This heel, I had to reverse engineer because the pattern was for a top down. This is the Shorty Heel Tab Sock by Larissa Gregorin, and it's a free pattern. Then, this is so cool, you guys. Because I reverse engineered it, which makes it sound way fancier than, I, I just did the pattern backwards. <laughs> I had to figure out how to do the heel because when you go top down, you flip this over and then you knit the inside together like two at a time to close that seam right there. So I had to figure out how to connect that, look at, well, that's not really, but look how beautiful that is. It's so good. You guys, this is a sewn seam and it's basically like you Kitchener it kind of, but with a needle. 
like darning needle. And I used the stitch by stitch hem video by the Chili Dog. And it, it seemed, what, no lie. When I first started, it seemed like it was gonna be cumbersome and I was like, why did I do this to myself? But once I got rocking and rolling on it, it was fine, it was fine. Pair of socks for me, I have not worn them yet. I am going to start wearing them now and I am interested to see if they stretch out while wearing because my two, my size two needles with the 64 stitches fit really nice. I wash and dry my socks. I put them all in a garment bag, but sometimes if they have stretched out and are too big, I throw them in the dryer. So I wonder if these are gonna stretch out at all. We shall see. But to put them on now, they're they're snug, like snugger than I, I think I'll like. But I loved this heel and will totally do it again. I love, love, love my shorty socks. I absolutely love them. My next FO I do not have here. I knit Belfry and Booyah by Susan Claudino. I have a few of her patterns. I think some years ago she had a sale where it was like buy one, get one, or like buy three, get one free, something like that. And I bought a few of her patterns. So it's been in my library forever. And I finally made it. I made them for Cole. So I will insert a little video of him getting them. I mean, this kid is one of the most knit worthy kids. He loves his stuffies. He loves them. He knows all their names. He wants to take him with him when he goes places. It just, ugh, melts my heart. I have another FO. I'm also going to make Cole one because uh, my brother went to a Halloween party and Cole spent the weekend with us, which I absolutely loved every flippin' minute of it. I'll put pictures like at the end. Halloween is one of my favorite times and the weekend he was here was trick or treat in our little edition. Well, he also got to meet that weekend, Hennifer, Hennifer Lopez, my emotional support chicken and he loves her, loves her. He'd come up to every, everyone who came over, like my cousin Jana came, and he was like, are you sad? <laughs> I said, I was like, oh, that's Hennifer. You're supposed to hug her when you're sad and she'll make you feel better. So he'd hug her, he'd hug her and he'd be like, I'm sad, guys. And she is so, I mean, I'm serious. If you don't have an emotional support chicken, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. It's an awesome knit. It's so much fun. She just makes me happy. If you weren't here on the last episode, that is an emotional support chicken. And this is from the Knitting Tree in LA. That's a yarn shop there. They have these kits. Look how cute. And I said on the last episode, it comes with everything you need except for the stuffing. You guys, I didn't even notice this. I have to show you. I didn't even, oh, I need to take those out of there. I did not notice this until I went to knit the beacon stuff. Like it comes, all the beak stuff comes in a little bag like this. Plus you get, you know, the yarn for Hennifer or whichever chicken you choose. I mean, you get a sticker, didn't see that. Plus you get a darning needle, a chicken progress keeper, look, and your stitch markers. Like it seriously has everything in there. I guess as a person who knits all the time and has all the stuff, like I wouldn't have thought of those things for somebody who had never knit before or that doesn't knit often or whatnot. So if you wanted to buy this as a gift for maybe a new knitter, like it legit has everything in there, but the stuffing. Love it. Like I said, 10 out of 10 recommend. I'm making another one. It was a really fun knit. They'll be linked down at the knitting tree, which is where they are. For those of you who know Robin at the yarn birds, which I love. I'm a bring her up again later. She also has them on her yarn truck. You can also buy just the pattern and use your own yarn. 
I just got a B reel. Have you guys heard of B reels? Look. So this is a B reel. You're supposed to take a picture, a real picture. So like no filters or anything like that. Did I talk about this on the last episode? Why do I feel like I talked about this on the last episode? You have two minutes to take your picture and it's supposed to be like, hey, this is what's really happening. It's not like I'm putting some stupid filter on or trying to like stage the photo and be somebody I'm not. So if any of you have Be Real, look me up because my uh, little followy thing is really sad. I follow like five people, six people. <laughs> my cousin is a sophomore at OSU and she's the one who got me into it. So I get to see her and all her friends. It's fun, you know doing college, college stuff. This is gonna be so hard to edit. This might be as bad as a martini episode. <laughs> Guess what's next? Whips. One whip I'm not going to show you, that's my Yarmulata. That has also not gotten it, getting, it's not getting any love. It has not been knit on very much. I've probably knit like six rows since I've seen you. So, and it's big and cumbersome. And I'll just show you once I get some, you know, progress on it. One thing that I've been absolutely loving is my spinning. Drop spindling for me is this like huge mental health thing. I love it. I love waking up in the morning. Even if I just have 15 minutes, like I just love drop spindling. Spinning this is so calming, meditative. I just like the act of doing it. And I have a long way to go. So this is a Turkish drop spindle from Shepherd's. Is that upside down? Yes, you can't see it, but that is Shepherd's Woodworking. I got this in 2018. I see them at a lot of our local festivals. And my turtle is ginormous. I still have this much for the half. What my plan is, I am going to try for you uh, drop spindlers who are, I wanted to say prolific. <laughs> Maybe you're prolific. I don't know. If you are a drop spender who is very, very, very well versed, my plan is to finish spinning this onto this turtle and hope that it fits. I mean, I've seen Turkish spindles that are just cram full. So we shall see. Um, I'm going to try. But then I'm going to spin the other half and I'm going to try and connect the turtles. And if I can't figure that out, I'll just like wet felt them together, or spit, splice them, whatever. I'll figure it out. But if you have a better idea or if you have any videos, because I did try and find a video and it, I didn't see anything that was doing exactly that. Here's your call. If you know of a video that, or if you know how or whatever, if you've done it before, let me know. I'm going to try and make these turtles all one and I am going to um, chain ply them. Now that I'm saying that out loud, instead of connecting the two turtles together, should I chain ply one of the turtles and then connect the second turtle to it like as I'm chain plying it okay you smart people let me know <laughs> what what you think I should do this is gonna be a long haul project and I am just fine with that oh forgot to tell you this is Pullworth and this is from on a quest fiber I did look at her shop like while I was adding her to the show notes and her website is out of order or didn't come up but her Etsy came up and she's on vacation. So I don't really know what's going on with her. There you have it, folks. She does have a YouTube channel that I will also connect to. She, one of the last videos I watched of her was how she spins for a supported, uh, a supported Turkish. I wanna try it, but I'm scared I'm gonna mess that up because it is 
a very different technique than how I spin. I will link that video for any of you spinners who care to see that. It's very interesting. That is not how I spin. I think it's really cool though how she does it. See, I love that I just don't have to add orange juice because my cubes are in there. My next whip is in my ice dyed bag from my friend Carrie. Look how pretty it is. She is Carrie from The Creative Obsession. She also has a YouTube channel. She does quilting and things. I've talked about her before. I love her face. So if you like those kind of things, she'll be linked. And this is the LTYC Super Bulky Cowl. And I forget what that stands for. It is a yarn shop, I think. Somebody made this specifically for Malabrigo Rasta. Do I have the tag in here? I don't have the tag in here, but here it is. Uh, oh no, that's pretty, that's very true to color. It's awesome. This is all the first, this is a new cast on BTW. This is a free pattern and this is going to be a Christmas gift. Now you can't see it very well now, but see these pearls and then see these knits and then see these pearls. It twists around and the, and the, this picture doesn't do it justice either. Let me see if I can put one in here. It twists around free pattern. I think I've already said that there's an even number cast on 90 stitches. I mean, it's the easiest, but like you guys, this is the pattern. This is the pattern right here. You cast on 90 stitches, you knit three, purl three, all the way around. Because it is knit three, purl three, you're always like moving to the side and it gives it that twisted look. Also, this yarn is scrumptious. This yarn is scrumptious. So this is something, I needed some projects that I could talk to people and just pick up and go, and I didn't have any. Plus, I wanted some gift knits. So it checked all the boxes. I had a little cast on party, you know? There aren't enough hours in the day to make all the things that I wanna make. Said like every crafter ever, then my next whip is in my bag from Color Morphosis. And she sent me that bag along with this. Do you guys remember when I opened it? And now I am going, look how cute. This is like pottery. It has little feet on it. Isn't it cute? I'm gonna light my candle because I'm sitting here I save it because it's so little. Like, I, I don't want to burn it unless it's a special occasion. And you guys are my special occasion today. It comes in this little pot of matches. And look. Woo! Oompa! Why won't you light? Why aren't you lighting? Goodness gracious. It smells really yummy. It's like spicy or something. There's a spice in there. Now what do I do with this? Um, I didn't think that out. Stand by. Are you surprised I didn't think that out? Because I'm not. If Dan was in here, he'd be rolling his eyes at me. <sighs> didn't even have to get up. I put it on my inset burner. Anywho, this is my color morphosis bag. And this is a Christmas present for my mom. So Cinda, if you're watching, skip forward some. Don't watch this. This yarn was gifted to me. I think Debbie, I think Debbie gifted this to me. It is the Fleece Artist National Park Collection. And it's Canada's 150th anniversary, uh, or birthday, excuse me. In honor of Canada's 150th birthday, we have curated a collection highlighting 13 of Canada's national parks one for each province and territory. And this one is, where is it? Oh, Greenwich. Greenwich Dunes PEI. And it's my mom's colors. And this, this pattern 
is amazing and I freaking love it. It is, I don't have the pattern printed out. It's the Roses, Rosa's Campancho. Capancho, is that right? Rosa's Capancho by Emma Fascio, Fascio, and it is a free pattern. This yarn, you guys, I don't know that you can get it anymore, maybe in a stash down or something. So, um, funny story, there was a skein in a stash down. Want to know how I know? Because I had to order it. Because I miscalculated. You know me in numbers. So I was short. And it hasn't come in the mail yet. And it looks like a way different lot. So I might have to rip back and blend. Because I went, when I was linking stuff for show notes, I went on their website and they don't show it. But here's how far I am. It's on cable needles, so you can't see it. But look at that color. There's the side detail. And this is, you knit straight for the neck, and then you knit down for it. Now, I am hoping, first off, if you guys can score this yarn, and I don't know a lot about fleece artists, but if this is a standard base of theirs, let me see. It doesn't even say on here what it is. I wonder if it had another tag on it and I missed it. So I can't even tell you the fiber content of it. But whatever this base is, it is squishy wonderfulness. And the entire time I've knitting this for my mom, I've wanted one. I want one. I want to make one for other people. I'm going to make more of this pattern because it's a super fast knit. It's bulky yarn. No, not bulky yarn. I hate that it doesn't have the, wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember it had the, it had a different tag on it. Oh, hold on. I need more booze. Dudes, I can't find it anywhere. I know I had it. I remember now there was like an extra there was an extra tag on it that said what it was. Fleece Artist National Parks Collection. I don't know why this is so hard to find. So it looks like it's either going to be blue-faced or merino. I don't know. It really irritates me that I can't find that tag because I know that I saved it. Actually, let me look up the pattern. Capancho. So this calls for... Bulky yarn, so this is their bulky, because I do remember that I looked at that when I was choosing the pattern. And according to Ravelry, their bulky is 100% merino and 126 yards. At least that's the only bulky that they are showing on Ravelry. The weird thing about this is I've read the pattern several times and it says that she did this whole thing in like 131 yards. And that's a lie because I had two skeins of 126 yards and I have this much left and I don't think I'm gonna get like the whole thing. So, okay, she didn't lie. I can't read, which you've probably already figured out. I mean, hello, shit show. She does meters and grams, and I just saw the yards. Well, she said that she used this certain yarn, and then in parentheses, it had 120 yards. I don't even know where I got 131 or whatever I said. It said 120 yards. If I read on, it then went on to say 150 grams. Well, the 120 yards was the 50 gram yarn she was talking about using. So really, I needed 360 yards. Is that right? 120 times three, three, two, yeah, 360. And I only had, what I say, 126, 232. So, duh. I'm hoping this blocks out this way. So I'll keep you posted on this. I hope that it blocks out. I mean, I followed the pattern. If I knew it was going to be that much of a difference, I would have shortened the neck. And they said that you can shorten it, but my mom likes stuff up around her neck. Um, so I just kept it the way the pattern read. 
probably going to cut a lot of that out because it was just me talking to myself about how I was going to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I have this in whips and it's not technically a whip because I haven't started it yet. However, I am going to start it today. So I am including it in my whip section. By the time you guys see this, it will for sure be on the needles. Stand by, I have another one first. It's hard to read these notes. How did I even do that? Okay, back up. I have another one before I show you that one. This one's actually cast on. These are the Slantways Mittens. It's called Slantways the Mittening by Chrissy Lee. It's a free pattern. Again, this is going to be a gift. I don't know to who yet, but I had some bulky yarn. It's been in my stash for a while. And I'm like, let's knit this shit up, man. So there they are, you can't, not a great picture, right? This is in, and I'm talking deep stash, you guys. This is Colorscape Chunky by Rowan. And does it have a colorway name? It's 100% lamb's wool, 100 grams, no colorway name. Like not even a number? Huh, not even a number. Here's what it looks like, it's bulky. Look how pretty. And this is how far I am on one mitten. And it looks so long, doesn't it? I am at the decreases for the fingers. So it's not really, I mean, depending on how the decreases work, they look pretty quick. Again, fast knit that you can knit while uh, you're talking for the most part and they're very squishy. Okay, now we're to my last whip that isn't really a whip, but it's gonna be a whip, and that is the Blue Ridge Cowl, and it looks like this. Now, currently, as we speak, they may be there already. I've not been looking at my text messages, but the bows, Happy anniversary. So a lefty knitter, Aquila and Johnny Bow, it's their anniversary. They are on their way to, uh, should I say that? Someone's obviously house sitting for them. So it's not like you're going to go rob them. And probably by the time you see this, they'll be home anyway. So it won't matter. Uh, spoiler alert, we're back. That was like two weeks ago. It's just unfortunately, my life has been chaotic and it's taken me this long to edit the video but they uh, are going to the Smoky Mountains and we are meeting them there later this week. And Quill and I decided to do, it was actually Johnny Bo's idea, totally. He gets credit for it. But we are starting a cast on for the vacation. And because it's so fitting, we did the Blue Ridge Cowl and that's by Fogbound Knits. It's a $6 pattern and I'm gonna show you my colors. So this isn't a very good picture. Actually, let me see if I can put a better picture in. See the mountains? Get it? Okay, these are my colors. Maybe I'll leave that there. So this is being blown out totally. This is a Johnny Bow colorway. This is he dyed it on Swish DK uh, Knit Picks. There is no colorway name to my knowledge. There, it's a little better. But that's going to be up at the neck. Then, I don't know which color is which. This is going to be my mountains. This is Mineville Wool Project. This is a one-off I got from Simply Socks, so you can't get it again. It's a really pretty color that you're not seeing. That's not how it looks. It's more of an aquamarine color in, in real life. That's pulling muted. Maybe aquamarine's a bad example. Anyway, what you're seeing is not it. And then this is my other color. This was gifted to me by my friend Elizabeth, and it is Beehive Yarns. I'm really excited to cast it on. So this is going on my needles after I get done talking to y'all. And I have I have my yarn condoms all ready to go. <laughs> I just wound that today. It's in my mushroom bag. Bye. Who is this? Oh no. Oh wait, see. 
freaking zipper bags, man. I thought I zipped my yarn up in there. I mean, I kind of almost did. This is bird leg bags. I know I got this at Simply Socks. Drag. I need more ice cubes. Potty break. What up? I'm back. Next up is Happy Mail. And I've gotten just a couple things that are awesome, obviously. Stacy from Her Dazzling Creations sent me a super nice card that she made, these talented people, and uh, just said some really nice things about my dad and wanted to send me yarn. She dyes yarn, and she sent me two skeins. This is The Devil's Front Porch, AKA Texas Summers. And this is 100% superwash merino, 490 yards. 400, did I read that right? Yes, 490 yards. And it's this really cool coral. I was going to say rust, but this is rust. And it's it's more, it's not really, it's corally. Terracotta. Terracotta. This is more rust. I would call this terracotta. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not terracotta. Whatever it is, it's super pretty. <laughs> it's the devil's front porch. That's what it is. That is going to knit up beautifully. Thank you so much. A lot of you have reached out to me about losing parents. And it's just so weird, right? It's going to be that year of firsts. I'm not necessarily looking forward to holidays and stuff like it's just gonna be weird but I'm okay it's okay we're okay I think that my grieving process was totally normal I do and I think that my dad would have been proud that I wasn't a complete fucking basket case maybe sometimes I was but it was minimal <laughs> So my next happy mail is from Robin at the Yarnbirds, the Yarnbirds truck, Birdie. Her truck's name's Birdie. I just love her. And some of you may have caught the live that I did with her. She does a live every Friday at five, except for last night because she is currently in London doing London things. I'm living vicariously through her stories. But she usually does a live at five on Instagram and she invited me to come and it was the week before Rhinebeck. And I said that I had FOMO and she's like, you don't have to have FOMO because you're getting happy mail to help with your FOMO. So one of the dyers that she carries, her truck is awesome, by the way. If you ever see yarn birds vending anywhere, you have to check it out. But one of the dyers she carries is a Whimsical Wood Yarn Company, and she has the best colorway names. Like, I, I love her yarn. I love all of it. Robin knows how much I love it. And she sent me two skeins, which this is getting blown out, two skeins of her yarn. <sighs> Here. And this is, I went all the way to Rhinebeck and all I got was this shit ass yarn. I mean, right, how could I not love her? And this one is, I lost my ass at Cake Palooza. I mean, it's as close to Rhinebeck as I got this year, which Cake Palooza, that's where Robin was vending. I'm not even gonna touch on the shit show that transpired during Rhinebeck weekend. I think most people are calling it the event. <laughs> but Robin was at Cake Palooza, and I guess it was really cool. So I did get me a little piece of it, and I looked at all the pictures and everything. I mean, you guys, Rhinebeck is just, even though I wasn't there, I still got to see all my friends together in one place, and I, I loved watching all the Rhinebeck recap videos i mean it was it was except for the sad ones you know of the event but i will tell you okay for the event for those of you who don't know that was so cryptic and shitty it's kind of like when somebody says if you know you know well no i don't know explain it to me you know <laughs> like one of those so there are events that are sort of like satellite events is that what you call it? fringe events i've heard them called as well 
um, outside of New York Sheep and Wool. New York Sheep and Wool happens in Rhinebeck. It is the creme de la creme of the fiber festival in North America, maybe, maybe just United States. I'm not 100% positive. Is Knit City bigger than Rhinebeck? That, I guess I've never done any research on any of those things. So I'm totally talking out my ass and take everything I say with a grain of salt. All I know is that people come from all over the world to go to New York Sheep and Wool, which is also referred to as Rhinebeck because it's in Pecker Nats. I think it's my plants, you guys. People call it Rhinebeck because it's easier to say than New York Sheep and Wool. So then there's all these other little events like Cake Palooza and um, Indie Untangled. Is that the other one? I mean, there's some other ones that I'm not sure of. But last year, as some of you know, we all went to Woolen Folk. And this year, Woolen Folk was a shit show. Sorry, not sorry. I watched it all unfold. Many of you are probably rolling your eyes over the fact that I'm even still talking about it because you're like over it. But it was a shit show and not in like a fun way. Like I kind of like to think my shit show is. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about. I'm sorry if I'm being cryptic. I hate it when other people do that. So the fact that I was doing it just... But Cake Palooza, which is where Robin was, was amazing, I heard. Even though it rained, but it's fine. It's fine. Did I say how hard this was going to be for me to edit? <laughs> I wish you guys were here. I wish you were like physically here in this room and that we could be BSing together. Instead, I'm going to get done recording. Dan's going to have to listen to my mouth run 100 mile an hour because I'm in a really good mood. Okay, more happy mail. My friend Betty, who is now my friend, started out as my spinning instructor. Betty is the one who taught me how to spin. I love her so much. It just dawned on me because I was thinking I could add a picture. I don't have a picture with Betty and we need to rectify this immediately. I will get on that. I do not have a picture with Betty and that makes me sad. But she had a spin in at her house. She gave me this. Do you guys know what this is? It's a porcupine quill. That is a porcupine quill. Now, I'm guessing there are probably many species of porcupine. It makes me want to do more research on them, and I just haven't yet. I've had this for a while. It is, I mean, look at it. It is so nice. I've picked up stitches with it. I've undone knots with it. I've like, I mean, I've used this for so many things. I guess you can buy them like in bulk, which I didn't know. Oh God, I hope they're ethically sourced. Do they lose these? I need to research this, but it is really flipping cool. And I just had to show you because I loved it. And what Betty did, if any of y'all want to, now you just heard me say, I have not researched this, so I don't know if they're ethically sourced. I don't know any of that. Upon doing a quick Google search, they do have ethically sourced porcupine quills, and there's a whole bunch of them on Etsy, and there's even different looking ones. They're super cool. I will look into it. If you want these, you might want to look into it, but she said that when you buy them, you get like a whole pack. And then she gave them to her friends and I got one. I cannot believe that's a porcupine quill, you guys. When I think porcupine quill, like this is hard. It's like bone. So I did some more research. The porcupine quills are made of keratin, which is the same thing hair and nails are made of. They are the third largest rodent. And the funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing is... The Latin name translates to quill pig and the German name translates to thorn swine. <laughs> so that makes me wonder what kind of porcupine this came from. I've never seen a porcupine. I don't know that we have porcupine here. Is it porcupines or porcupine? Is the plural porcupine? See, I have so many questions. I have so many questions. 
What's the plural for porcupine? On the website simple.wiktionary.org, they say, porcupines, simple English wiktionary. I also found an answer to this question. What is the plural of porcupine? Do you want to hear it? Yes. On the website Britannica.com, they say, porcupine, cocaine, noun. Plural porcupine is also porcupine. Thank you. Not a problem. I'll be researching. I promise. I promise. It could be a drink stir. What you got in my 40, homie? Yep, I totally didn't share that with Dan. Please tell me somebody caught that Friday reference. I gotta hurry. This is getting serious down here. Dan has two brothers, and my sister-in-law, Abigail, is crafty like us. And she made me this and finished it like that weekend. She put the initials on it and handed it to me. Isn't that cool? The lighting is messing with us. First, this that you can't really see and that are both from Abigail. She was into acrylic pouring for a while. Is that what it's called? Acrylic pour. Oh, there you can see it kind of better. Acrylic pouring. You know what they did. They like lifted the cup up and it like, you know, she did that for a while. She's super artsy like we are. She's She doesn't knit though. We got, we, we got to fix that, Abs. We got to fix it. But she has been embroidering, and I don't know if you can see it, but the beads. This is her first beadwork ever, and she initialed it with the date. I need to get it framed. Isn't it cool? I love it so much. Okay, I'm, lose, I'm losing the battle with the light. My last happy mail, which isn't really mailed, Cole came for that Halloween weekend. I live an hour away from them. So we meet halfway. And for those of you who don't know, Mama Jean... I'm going to sit on this side of the screen now. For those of you who don't know, Mama Jean is my stepmom. I am blessed to have many mother figures in my world. Dan makes fun of me because I call so many people mom. I have friends who I call their mom moms. My stepmom is one of the most amazing people ever. My mom, for those of you who went to Yellow Springs, she is a unicorn. She is very shy. And uh, some of you got to meet her in real life. But Mama Jean is a quilter. And she has been on the podcast before. She hasn't been for a while, but she has been on the podcast before. She's an excellent quilter. She and Cade came to pick Cole up and we met for dinner and she had show and tell. And she showed me like a, this cool, tur she loves turkeys. And she showed me this cool turkey thing. And then she was like, this one's big. You're going to have to help me with it. And... I am going to insert a video here. Yeah, yeah. How is that? Is that? Is that a bubble? Like felt, like those felt things. Do you say thank you? Yeah, they're really nice for carrying and stuff. Nice. This is what we're going to story on the quilt, which I'll show you here in just a minute. The story on the quilt is that many years ago now, I mean, I've been with Dan for 17 years and it was before that. I'll see if I can get a picture, but I'm not promising. Mama Jean has a quilt from when she was a little girl, I believe. And I'll correct 
editing, Chevis. Well, correct it if I'm wrong. When she was a little girl, her neighbor made them quilts and used like their old pajamas, I think, to make them. And I love it. I love it. Mama Jean still has hers. I absolutely love it. And I asked her if I could one day have it because I loved it so much. And she said, well, why don't I make you your, I mean, yes, you can, but why don't I make you your own too? And I was like, are you serious? You do that? So we went to the quilt shop and I picked out fabric and I, like I remembered it, but I, you know, it's not like something that I think about. I've thought about it like a couple times, like, oh yeah, she has all that stuff. I wonder if she even remembers that that's the fabric that I picked out. I couldn't even tell you what the fabric was. So when you just saw my reaction there, it took it a while to register in my brain what I was looking at. And now it is on my bed. And every time I walk into my bedroom, like I get the biggest smile on my face. It is gorgeous. And Dan and I are going to show it to you right now. Look how big this is, you guys. I mean, isn't it freaking amazing? Look at it. I am I, like, I'm in love with it. Oh my gosh. Thanks, babe. Oh my gosh. It makes me so happy. It makes me so happy. Look at the quilting of the border. We have some feathers. It has a label because they should all have labels. And it's Chevy's Lone Star quilt. And that it was made in September of this year. I freaking love it so much. So that's my happy mail, even though it was a mail. Oh, I have a couple other things that are kind of happy mail, but also are not mailed. My last episode, I talked about uh, the Michigan Fiber Festival and showed you all my stuff. And as I was editing, I'm like, dude, I didn't show this and this. What am I doing with my life? No. So I have two things to show you from the Michigan Fiber Festival that I forgot to show you on the last episode. And then we'll be on to miscellaneous. So the first thing, do you remember when I talked about the yarn truck rodeo? So in the yarn truck rodeo, which I am in the Midwest, if you're a new viewer, I am in Indiana. So I frequent, I would say, fiber festivals in like the Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio radius, we'll say. So the yarn trucks that are typically at festivals that I go to, so there's Yarn Birds, Frog It, New Guinea Yarn Truck, and then there's Yarn Adventures Yarn Truck. And I forgot to show these. I got stickers from them up at the Michigan Fiber Festival, and they're so flipping cute. Wool Endowed. <laughs> Which, did they throw that in? Did I buy that? I don't even remember buying that. And then if I can't take my yarn, I'm not going. And then this is for our camper. And then this one is my favorite look. They said that the girl who, I wanna say little girl, I'm guessing she's not a little girl. She's probably like in high school or something. It's a mushroom and she's knitting, even though that totally looks woven, doesn't it? It looks like one of those pot holder. Remember those from like, what was that, the 70s? Cause I didn't have one and I was born in the 80s. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Those little pot holder looking things. Anyway, she drew this and they give her a proceed. Like every sticker they sell, they give her like an artist's fee. And I just love her. She makes me happy. You know my thing with mushroom. That's all for happy mail. No, it isn't. I don't know what I was thinking, well, I was drinking mimosas. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. First off, I was cramming together Happy Mail and enabling. And then I said that I had two things that I got from, I might have said Yellow Springs. I meant Michigan Fiber Festival, if I did say Yellow Springs. And then I didn't end up showing you the second thing again, again. This is the second thing I got that I forgot to tell you about. And it's a broom, whisk broom. I can't remember the name of the vendor. I don't believe I got their card, but I love my broom. 
there's the second thing. <laughs> We're on the home stretch. I'm down to miscellaneous, and there really isn't very much a miscellaneous except for Vlogtober. I had the best time watching Nitty Witch. That's Vanessa. I did get to meet her last year at Rhinebeck, so now I consider her a friend because, you know, I've like met her IRL. And I just loved, she draws a tarot card every day. I love the colors she knits. I enjoyed following her Vlogtober. And my favorite Vlogtober is Andy the Nitrous. I've talked about Andy a whole bunch on here. She's one of my West Coast peeps. She finally, finally, the stars aligned for her. Like, I'm so, I'm so, so happy for her because I know, like, what a road it's been. So she worked for a yarn shop um, and it closed. And it was like, she loved her job. And she has been hustling, hustling for like a year, you guys. She's been working the farmer's markets. She's been, like, she has been hustling. Her shop is in her house and the stars aligned for her, and she is getting an L, she has, she has an L-Y-S. This is probably the champagne, <laughs> but I'm so freaking happy for her. And over Vlogmas, no, Vlogtober, Vlogmas is December, Vlogtober, which is October, she showed getting the keys to her shop and painting it and you get to follow along with the painting and the hanging the grid walls and putting the countertops in and cutting the hole for the sink. Like it just makes me so happy. I smile from ear to ear the whole time I'm watching it. So if you guys want to binge watch, I mean, there it's like 10 minutes a day, I think. Like you can binge watch her Vlogtober and then if you're out that way, definitely go to the Naughty Nitrous. Her yarn shop is in downtown Roseburg, Oregon. Yes, Roseburg, Oregon. It, it's been so much fun to watch her shop come to be. And of course, at the end of Vlogtober, which is Halloween, the 31st, right? She um, wasn't done. Like she isn't planning on opening, I think she said sometime mid-November, but she's going to continue her vlogs so that we can watch. Like we get to be part of, you know, probably the grand opening and stuff or when she opens her doors. You guys are not going to believe this. You have purchased something from our online store. Absolutely. And if you're so not that's also, Andy. Uh, I'm literally sitting here editing her section of the video. And it popped up that she had a live Instagram. And it was her announcing that everything cleared and that she gets to open her doors on Small Business Saturday. How flipping cool is that? We must have ESP. So there you have it. Put that on your list for small business Saturday shopping. I'm just so excited for her. So if y'all are out there, if y'all are out that way, when she opens her shop, please go support her. You don't have to wait for her shop, her physical shop to open. You can shop online and actually do that. You don't even have to be in Oregon. It's just if you're in Oregon, you get the bonus of seeing all of her yarny goodness in person. Like I said, it's been so much fun to watch this dream of hers come to fruition. And it's really been something that has been uh, making my heart feel pretty full all month. Love your friends. Tell them you love them. I mean, that's that's really what all of this is about, right? For, for sake of sounding woo-woo. I can't seem to get away from this. So I'm going to let you go. If you're still here, you're pretty rad. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that happy horse shit. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Cool. Are you ready to open your surprise? It's Halloween, you know. So look, this, this can be your trick or treat bag.
<laughs> okay, that's Belfry. He's a bat. Can you say Belfry? Belfry? Yep, his name's Belfry the bat. Stick it to Uncle Dan. Mm -hmm. Nah, I want on me. Oh. <laughs> or on my uh, or on my nose so I can see the sneeze. How are you gonna breathe? I can breathe. <laughs> okay. I I can feel it. Huh. Wow, he's bright green. This is Booyah. Booyah. He's a ghost. So Belfry and Booyah are best friends. What do you think? <laughs> you like them? Awesome. 